What's good, y'all? This is the kid DC Wrestling back once again with another one. Like always, we're about a week away before WWE's next premium live event or pay per view, whichever one you prefer. WWE Bash in Berlin. You know, I want to say this is the first time they're doing a PLE in Germany. I know this is something that, you know, I know WWE's been kind of talking about for quite a while now. Obviously, for the past one to two years now, they've been doing a lot of international shows and all their international shows have been really good. You know, the crowd atmosphere just been amazing. So this Germany crowd uh, should be no exception. And we got about five matches on the card. So I'm going to go ahead and get right into it. I don't really see them adding any other matches on this show. But um, we got the tag team title match player for the women's side. We got Alba Fire, Issa Dawn defending their titles against the former champions, Bianca. And, of course, Jade Cargill, you know, the story, Bianca and Jade have been trying to get their titles back um, since they lost back at um, the, the, re the previous pay-per-views, uh, Clash at the Castle, obviously. And I even said it then, I didn't really see necessarily Alba Fire and Issa Dawn holding the tag team titles that very long, you know. Um... Me personally, if I'm going to be real with you, if I had to pick a winner of this match, I think Bianca and Jade are going to win their titles back. So it'll definitely be a shock if the Unholy Union end up retaining their tag team titles, you know. Um, but should be an okay one. It'll probably, it'll probably be one of those cooldown matches, if I'm being honest. And uh, yeah, I think Bianca and Jade got this one in the bag. The next match is a very big one, obviously. Uh, CM Punk, Drew McIntyre 2. This is the rematch from SummerSlam a couple of weeks ago. But this time, there is no Seth Rollins. There is no special guest referee being involved. This time around, we're doing a strap match. And, you know, it makes sense to do a strap match because CM Punk and Drew McIntyre have been locked to each other like toxic relationship vibe um, ever since CM Punk has been back in the WWE. So... I think a strap match is, you know, perfect for this one. I did see a few complaints online because, see, in this match, particular strap match, you know, they, um, you know, you got to touch the, the, the goal post like four times just to win the match um, or the turnbuckle in the sense. And I've seen a few people that weren't too really happy about that. But nevertheless, I think it's there. If there's anybody who can make, you know, a match like that work, it is CM Punk, it is Drew McIntyre, and we've seen strap matches like that before in the past, so either way, um, I do think CM Punk does go over here, I feel like, you know, you gotta even score out, you know, Drew McIntyre won at SummerSlam, so I feel like from a logical storyline standpoint, it makes sense for, you know, CM Punk to, well, get his lick back, and he will, I feel like, when he beats Drew McIntyre in this strap match. The next match, you got the Terra Twins, as they call it, the original members of the Judgment Day, who started the Judgment Day. Uh, Rhea Ripley, Damian Priest are going to be taking on the new Judgment Day in the form of Liv Morgan and Dominic Mysterio. You know, I don't need to really go in about the storyline. I think we all know what's going on. I mean, this is one of the big topic points, I mean, in WWE right now, this whole Liv, Rhea, and uh, Dom storyline, you know, it's been going on the whole summer, and... Honestly, I I would give it to live and to um live and Dom. I feel like I feel like you know this Judgment Day man. If you're gonna get these guys and girls off hot, you gotta give them the win like crazy. And I don't know. Something tells me this ain't really the end of this feud. You know, Priest still has his issue with Finn Balor. So me personally, what I would personally have, I would have. Finn Balor, you know, Judgment Day get involved, cost Damian Priest and Reed a match, and, you know, with Bad Blood potentially being the next WWE show, you get Priest and Finn Balor one-on-one. -on -one. Um, so me personally, like I said, I'd, I'd personally have Liv and Dom get the win, but prediction video-wise, I think they're going to end up giving it to Damian and Rhea just, just because. Um, but, yeah, so we'll, we'll see how this match goes, and... Um, yeah, that's pretty much about, wraps it up about that match. And uh, this is probably going to be the main event. You know, Randy Orton versus Guntner. Right off the gate, Guntner's going to win. I mean, it's his first title defense. They're in Germany. 
there in his home country. He, he ain't losing. Like, Randy Orton's going to put up a fight, but he's not going to beat Gunther. It's just not going to happen. So, um, Gunther's going to win, but it should be a good match. Just as good, maybe even a little bit better than the match they had back at, you know, King and Queen of the Ring back in May. But um, we'll see what happens. And finally, you got Cody Rhodes versus Kevin Owens. Yeah, they've been um, teasing, man. They've been teasing this storyline with Kevin Owens turning on Cody. And, um, you know, we still got, you know, one week of SmackDown left before the show. But Cody Rhodes will go over. Uh, I do think Cody Rhodes will retain his WWE title. Will Kevin Owens turn heel? I think that's just a matter of we got to wait and see. But um, overall, man, I think Bastion Berlin should be a really good show for the Germany fans and everybody else watching around the world.